to an IndyCar then? Yeah, a couple of different, obviously different layout, but the, the, the buzz on the grid is quite impressive today. It really is a um, great crowd. And, um, you know, for a first go, the E-Prix is, is, is shown very, very well. But clearly the, the, the Grand Prix has... Round six for Formula E, east to west in the USA, from Miami and Florida to Long Beach, California. 20 miles south of the bright lights of Los Angeles, another iconic location as the championship continues to sharpen its competitive edge. Ahead of the drivers, a famous Long Beach track. 2.1 kilometers, 39 laps, seven turns, and inevitable drama. Five races, five different winners for someone to take control of the championship on the biggest stage of all. Round five saw the USA play host to Formula E for the first time. All points of the compass led to downtown Miami in Florida and a traditional all-American welcome for drivers and team owners alike. Behind the Rasmataz, a quiet determination for leading drivers to pull away from the pack and for Team Andretti to put in a performance in their home E3. Miami was about to ink its signature on the championship. John Eric Byrne was the man on pole position and he held the lead on the run down towards the first corner despite a friendly tap from Nico Cross. The action was frantic in the opening laps as everyone tried to get to grips with the new circuit that they had limited running on. And Lowe Duval was making his way on the order in the Dragon car. Up at the front, Bird forced his way past Byrne for the lead. I didn't get your energy reading. 0.1. But Bird then had to crawl around for the remainder of the lap because he'd stayed out too long and didn't have enough usable energy remaining. Bird rejoined well down the order in a battle with Nelson Piquet Jr. Up at the front, Daniel App was leading the way ahead of Frost and Degrassi. Scott Speed was making his Formula E debut and was immediately making an impact, overtaking his teammate Jean-Eric Byrne. PK ended victorious in his duel with Sam Bird and then started to make his way up the order, then making his way past Jean-Eric Byrne. Andretti disappointed with Byrne, but very happy with Scott Speed, who was then moving up into third place up the inside of Lucas Degrassi. Then Nico Prost made the move for the lead of the race, past Daniel App with two laps to go. Scott Speed followed through past the German, and it was a duel between Prost and Speed for the final lap and a half. Prost was pushing hard, hit the wall, but he managed to keep it together and take the checker flag for victory in Miami. The second win of the season for the Edams team, the first of the year for Nico Prost. A win that would move him to the top of the Drivers' Championship. A beautiful view across Long Beach in California for the sixth round of the FIA Formula E Championship. 39 laps of the classic Long Beach street circuit, the historic Long Beach street circuit, await these all-electric race cars. My name is Jack Nichols. Alongside me in the commentary box is Dario Franchitti, a man who has won here at Long Beach in IndyCar, as well as lots of other places in IndyCar. And we have down in the pits, Nicky Shields. Dario, a word from you, this is a place you've been many, many, many times. Uh, wh what is this like compared to an IndyCar event? Yeah, a couple of different, obviously different layout, but the, the, the buzz on the grid is quite impressive today. It really is a um, great crowd. And, um, you know, for a first go, the E-Prix is, is, is shown very, very well. But clearly the, the, the Grand Prix has many, many years and it's a massive event. And this, for a first go, this E-Prix is very impressive. 
Arena Sheik, great to have you here at Long Beach. What does it mean to you to have Formula E here? Well, I think it's a really great idea to have, um, you know, some green race, you know, a supporting environment and it's so many people here supporting, you know, everything green and nice and we have to you know save the planet let's say so it's a second um it's actually the sixth race the first one um last year was the last year in beijing so it's it's really cool it's amazing weather people love it enjoy it and you know electric cars is the future for sure there is leonardo dicaprio uh, the venturi formula e team founder as well as of course an actor for academy award nominations uh, famously has never won one we can now hear from Adrian Brody the youngest man ever to win an Oscar for best actor uh, he has been here and that was for Roman Polanski's the pianist let's hear from him so Adrian Brody you've just arrived here in Long Beach um, how do you fancy swapping your acting career for driving one of these cars I'd love to try one of these maybe not with the audience first but I've actually raced uh, charity race four times on this track so I know the track well I know that turn one how how precarious it is i know the whole track pretty well like but i haven't driven something with this kind of horsepower so maybe some some of the guys should be getting tips from you what's that some of the drivers should be getting no, tips from get, you they don't need a tip from me <laughs> I, I grew up drag racing in queen so it's my driving style is not the finesse of this but we're being thrown off the grid thanks very much great to hear from adrian brody that obviously was a few moments ago uh, but now we're getting ready for the cars to pull forward from the dummy grid to the start grid and then the racing will be getting underway here's a look at the grid daniel app starts on pole position his first ever pole position nico cross alongside him on the front row nelson piquet jr third on the grid with lucas degrassi in fourth position fifth jean eric Byrne. he's got fan boost alongside him a best qualifying performance for scott speed he managed 10th last time out in miami antonio felix de costa as well has best his qualifying position with seven eighth for your own d'ambrosio ninth is stefan Savazan. tenth is sebastian buemi the man who qualified on pole but had his fastest time taking away for using too much power dario final thoughts before it all kicks off it's going to get interesting as the turn one they, they don't have any heat in these carbon brakes they tend to grab when they're like that turn one is a bit of a monster anyway with that chicane uh, if they all get through there uh, in one piece i'll be surprised and um it'll be very difficult to make up places today fan boost is going to be key pole position on the left hand side as we look at it is the yellow red and green car of daniel apt second on the grid the blue and yellow edams machine of nico cross silver and yellow in third place is nelson piquet jr all five lights are on and we go green in long beach and it's a bad start from cross great start from nelson piquet jr he looks to the inside line and he's going for the lead of the race into turn one wonderful start from piquet jr he leads cars flying everywhere a bit of contact in the back of the pack and it's a bit messy down there at the first chicane but what a start from nelson piquet jr sam burns in trouble he's out of the race and well certainly out of this car he might be able to live back around to the pits apt in second prost in third Vern in fourth the grassy and buemi completing the top six we're going side by side here with buemi trying to go oh, around the outside to go three wide there. Speed. But what a start from Nelson Piquet Jr. You think he's hungry? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's 35 years since his dad won here in Formula One, and he is desperate to repeat that feat here. Look at this. All sorts of pressure on Jean-Éric Verne. Side by side, Degrassi and Verne. And that's going to allow Scott Speed a chance to try and get through. But around the outside of turn six isn't really a possibility. We go on board with the American now. Into the hairpin of seven. Decides not to go for it there, but the top. Well, I don't know what's wrong with Verne because he he's dropping back really yeah. quickly from the leaders. At the end of lap one, the order is PK Junior, Apt, Prost, Verne, De Grassi, Speed, Buemi, De Costa, D'Ambrosio, and Sarazan. The top ten. The Verne's already been defensive there. He's got uh, the Lucas De Grassi right behind him. Scott Speed ready to go too. I don't know what happened in that first lap that allowed that separation of the front three, but. Uh, He's going to have to get going here. Yeah, there's uh, one point. PK Jr.'s uh, advantage is 1.4 seconds, and then it's 2.2 seconds from Prost back to Verne. So Nelson PK has absolutely flung it away at the start. This is Bruno Senna dancing around behind Stefan Sarazan as they come down into the right. Got a of great four. exit there. Great exit on the back straight. Let's see if Senna can get the move done 
Or is Sarazan going to put the block on him again? It's the battle for 10th position coming down towards the right-hander of Turn 5 now. Looks to the inside, Bruno Senna. Not quite confident enough, though. Ooh, thought that move was on there. Yeah, that's... Uh, Easy for me to see sitting here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, through uh, Turn 6 they come. A very, very short lap here. We're expecting uh, race lap times to be about 60 seconds. Now, Sam Bird is going to jump into his second car but he has got to make that last a long, old time. Yeah, what has happened there? Is the front, was the front wheel uh, slightly... Didn't quite see. It would be great to see what actually the damage was to the car as they come through to complete the second lap. In general, it was quite a clean start uh, compared to what it could have been. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> really? I'm, look, I'm trying oh, look to at find the, the silver linings. Look oh, at yeah. the damage on the wishbones. He's hit it's heavy contact, or somebody's been heavy contact with him. Yeah, absolutely. Jean-Eric Verne has just set the fastest first sector of anyone on that last lap. He's closed in four tenths of a second to the back of Nico Prost. Sarazan is all over the back of D'Ambrosio now for ninth position. But it's all line astern up towards the front. Nelson Piquet has absolutely legged it at the start. Then second place there is Daniel App. Third place behind him is Nico Prost, the championship leader. Uh, Piquet's start was brilliant, and I'm surprised that didn't defend a little more, frankly. Well, he may not have been expecting that, but Piquet was aggressive. He was hard up against that right-hand side wall. Very, very tight entry into that chicane. Made it work. Pulled one and a half seconds nearly on the first lap. He, he, he's going, and if he is doing what he has done in every previous race, which is save energy in that first uh, set, step of the race, the other guys are in trouble already. Yeah, absolutely. So, the car's cut down through turn one and two. The tight little chicane, and that's got speed in the wall! The has crashed and he's going to be out of the Epre here in Long Beach. A real shame, but he has just done the classic and there he is oh. and he's furious. Got to be a safety car there, I would say. That was a big hit. What a shame for Scott Speed. <sighs> Such a great job in uh, in Miami. Uh. Not, not much you can say really after that. We've got a yellow at turns one and two. Michael Andretti shakes his head. I wonder what's going through his head. Here's the onboard Dario. Okay, coming in there as normal on the line. Looks okay there. Just too much curve. Yeah. Look, both wheels off the ground. We talked about that. If you get it just right, it flies one side of the car, the left-hand side. Get it wrong, you'll see both front wheels in the air. Boom, yeah. lose your steering. Doesn't steer with the front wheels in the air. The guys behind did, uh, did well to avoid the likes of uh, Degrassi and Buemi. Safety but car. Out, safety yeah. car has been deployed then. So the Qualcomm safety car takes to the course. There it goes. And Scott Speed, well, a lot of American dreams will have sunk with that as well. The home hero, he was, you know, desperate to do well. He was in his Bruce Lee zone, but it hasn't worked out for him at all. This is bad news. Well, two ways you can look at it, I suppose. If you're PK, you get a chance to do some energy saving, but you've lost the lead of one and a half seconds. To me, he's lost the lead, plus his strong point, his real strong point is saving energy while still going quickly, better than maybe anybody else on the grid. He's probably the Scott Dixon of the, uh, you know, of Formula E. Maybe he's got this, the, the Kiwi streak as well, where he thinks he's paying for the fuel himself, but he's... Uh, look at Nelson start. PK. Great start. Everybody else got wheel spin. Look at the wheel, the black lines at left, load of wheel spin. PK just went. Watch how aggressive he is here on the run up to turn one. You'll see it. He just, he's already planning that move. He's getting right over. Apt, apt is there, you know? Apt is yeah, there on but the look inside at PK. line. Yeah. Uh, Piquet just caught him, caught him sleeping. Fantastic yeah. Ooh, start. So there was a shunt in there, Vern. And uh, oh, let's see if we can see what happened to Sam Bird. Wasn't really looking in the right place there. Yeah, I couldn't so see that with Sam. No, it all just got very busy down there. Uh, Vern and Prost came together. That might have been Vern sort of backing off to check the car's okay after contact. Like that. Oh, here we go. This will be good. This is on board with Piquet. Really smoky from Matt. This is the type of view you want to see as a driver. You're just, you know, you've got it. Look. He was just on the brakes, wasn't it? Yeah, cracking move. Yeah. Look how tight that first part of the, the chicane was for him. Yeah, nice. Yeah, really good stuff. This is on board the start with Scott Speed. Oh, doesn't get away particularly well. No, I had to put some opposite in, so clearly some wheel spin. Uh, Antonio Felix da Costa there on the inside line. Speed sends it to the outside, but he's going to go straight on here, isn't he? He has no option. Yeah. He really, that was the smart thing to do because otherwise, yeah, he's going to wreck the car. So to cost, I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest, if we saw a couple of penalties here or, you know, investigations, because Buemi, on the left-hand side, he would have gone straight over at that chicane. De Costa was on the inside line, and he lost out two places because he took the corner. Yeah, so that's I would love to... Thing. You have to see that from above, don't you? Yeah. Because if there was a, an advantage made, then, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll see the uh, car under investigation. On board with that. Watch the wheel spin. You'll see him feeding the opposite lock as the wheel spin takes hold here. This is on a, on a slope, this, this start. Five lights are on. There he goes. There you go. There's the opposite. Yeah. Bit too much wheel spin. 
you're going to see a grey and yellow car coming down the inside in about five, four, three. There we <laughs> go. <laughs> and he's thinking, damn, all that hard work in qualifying. <laughs> it's all for nothing. It's not a particularly long run towards the first corner there, actually, is it? It's quite a, a short little sprint. He's on board with Heidfeld. Then what are we going to see from Quick Nick? Lots that, of wheel spin. That l run is a lot longer than to the IndyCar corner, I can tell you. Yeah. So here he comes down into turn one, sort of looks to the inside, thinks, shall I poke it up the inside there? Nope. And now there's, there's Bird. What? I don't know what happened. No, sorry, that was Al Gashwari. So I d no, yeah, no, that was Bird with a broken suspension ahead yeah. of him. Don't get that. It's a big hit to break the suspension like that. Yeah, unless there was contact in that first corner. Yeah. So the Qualcomm safety car will be coming in this lap. Hopefully it's the first time and only time we'll see the Qualcomm safety car, but it's coming in this lap. When will Nelson decide to go? I'd say just sort of on the exit of turn six. He might go just about now. I think, yeah, yeah there he goes. because then he, he gaps him a little bit on the brakes too. I should be a racing driver. Ha so oh, big oversteer there for PK, he's getting onto power. But he's got away and we go green once again. John Eric Verne is using his fan boost there to try and get past Nico Prost on the Here run down comes. in towards turn Here one. Comes. Verne to the inside. Prost gives him space and Jean Eric Verne goes through up into third position. Can he get it stopped? Job done. Textbook. Verne into third. Textbook pass. Good use of the fan boost there. Absolutely. The rest of the order remains the same. Look at that. That was Lucas de Grassi trying to take his advantage to go past Prost as well. Here so comes Nico Buemi too. Loses two places in as many corners. Will Buemi fancy it? Actually, da Costa's very close to Buemi. And da Costa Ooh. goes for Ooh. it. Up the inside and through. There. Here comes the crossover though. Here comes Buemi with the crossover. Great racing as Buemi tries to get the cutback now to the inside. It's almost three wide because they've got, I think that's a Mahindra behind. It's, they're just coming down towards turn number five. It's, uh, no, it's Jerome D'Ambrosio in the Dragon car. Buemi is through, holding the inside line. De oh, is almost squeeze. in the wall. That allows D'Ambrosio around the outside of six. That's the, the inside for yeah. seven, but he's lost all his grip. Goodness <laughs> me. He's going to lose it out here too. Watch onto the straight. Oh, it'll be that. Just about kept that together, but that's going to allow Senna, Senna to go past Two cars. Oh, and that is uh, Charles Peak, and he's spun around. I think it's Trulli. Uh, car number it 10 is it is. Truly. Yes, it yeah, is Giano Giano. Trulli. And the car is broken, right front suspension. And here comes Senna, still side by side with Sarazan as they come down into the first corner. So that's Senna going through into ninth position. That could be another safety car, unfortunately. Lucas de Grassi is just on the fastest first sector of anyone on this lap. Goodness me, it's all kicking off, and we've only had eight laps of the race so far. And we go on board now with Heidfeld. Down into the right-hander at turn four. Out onto the back straight, right up behind his teammate, Stefan Sarazan. And there yeah, is truly the car. car again. And the safety car is deployed. There's no option. And yeah, <laughs> you, got, you got quite angry in qualifying about an unnecessary yellow flag at that corner. Are you happy with this decision? That was a good decision. I got <laughs> not, not as angry as uh, maybe uh, Buemi got after his, uh, oh, yeah. his penalty, but... Uh, yeah. So the second viewing of the Qualcomm safety car, we got our, we got away without it in in Miami, but there's no choice here. Yeah. Here we go. Let's see if we can see it. So we got all these shenanigans going on. What? Keep watching further back. Into view there comes a trolley car. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. So that's that's peak going bananas. What do they call that? A dart without feathers? <laughs> <laughs> that was. Yeah. He's come. He's come from. He's trying to overtake the guy in front of him. Wow. And so that's, uh, yeah, he's, he's tried to overtake Duval, <laughs> and Duval's gone, okay, fine, crash oh. into each other. <laughs> Poor Trulli was just driving along, thinking, <laughs> all right, another lap down, and got, got T-boned. Oh, God. The Qualcomm safety car coming in this lap then, and Nelson Piquet Jr. will get the racing back underway a little bit more tidy this time around as he puts the throttle down. Daniel Apter's stuck with him as they come across the line. The gap between them is six tenths of a second. Then it's six tenths back to Vern. De Grassi's not too far behind them either. Uh, Bruno Senna's looking quite racy there, but it's pretty much line astern as we get going again on lap 12 of 39 here in Long Beach. I wonder if they caught the field gap, just uh, nap it just a little bit there. 10 and 88 are under investigation, which is uh, Trulli and Charles Peak. Who is Trulli under investigation for being a, a target of somebody else's abuse? I don't know. <laughs> I presume uh, the correct terminology is the incident involving ah, car right. 10 and uh, 88 is under investigation, I'd have thought, because uh, it'll probably be a relatively swift investigation. Uh, there go the cars on the back straight. Lap 12, oh. a little dart out. This is all oh, Sebastian Buemi attacking his teammate Prost. Eases up, lets him go through, and he needs to be careful now because Antonio Felix de Costa is right behind him. But I was surprised that uh, Prost gave that up. Here comes de Costa up the inside into the hairpin. Great stuff from the Portuguese That's driver. That's how you do it. That's how you do the hairpin. Great move. 
Prost's going to be thinking, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> and now, but he's going to try and get back past the Costa on the run down in towards Turn 1, but he's on the outside, so he's not going to be able to get through there. It's nose to tail now for third position. Lucas de Grassi is looking feisty as they flash through. And, uh, yeah, Nico Cross, I'm surprised how sort of easily he let uh, Boemi through there. This is the man who's leading the championship. Yeah, he's going to have to be more aggressive than that, isn't he? The best form of uh, defence sometimes as an offence. He needs to attack a bit harder, I would say. We don't know what problems he's having in the car. The Costa just made a real mess of the of the corner onto the front straight there, onto the back straight, sorry. Nelson Piquet has just gone purple in sectors one and sectors two. He's the fastest man out on the circuit and he is waving goodbye to uh, everyone else behind him. De Costa's pushing hard. He goes a lot deeper into turn five than most of the other drivers, but he's managed to keep it all together, running up there in sixth position at the moment. It's all getting very scrambly behind as they come Prost into that slow corner. got a very unusual line. He takes a very wide line through that hairpin, which opens him up to get past on the way. Yeah. Sebastian Buemi has just done the fastest lap of anyone. Sub one minute, big lock up there coming into turn one. John Eric Byrne did that. He's feeling the pressure here from uh, Lucas. Yeah, only four tenths of a second behind as they come down. And look how close to Grassi is. It's all about the battle of the third position now. This is Senna squabbling over eighth with Jerome D'Ambrosio. But Jean Eric Verne is under big pressure from Lucas Degrassi behind him. Degrassi trying to get third place away. And being defensive with it. And once you start doing that, it just gets gradually slower and slower. So uh, Degrassi's got to try and get past him here, otherwise, the leaders are going to take off and leave him. Under braking for turn number five. They turn off Seaside Way and then into the car park area in front of the stadium. Sam Bird is using his fan boost. He's not really close to anyone, I don't think, in terms of position, because he's a lap down. This is Jaime Al-Ghashwari in 14th spot at the moment. But here come the leaders. Look how close it is for third and fourth. De Grassi tucked right up behind jean Eric Verne. Looks to the inside line, forcing Verne to just drive in the middle of the road, not be too committed either way, but just to keep an eye out on De Grassi behind him. Just keeping it busy, <laughs> keeping his eyes uh, on the rear of the hope hoping he's going to make a mistake. Meanwhile, Nelson Piquet sets the fastest first sector of anyone again. Bird's just set the fastest lap of the race using his fan boost, and that could give him two points if he can hold on to that till the end of the race. But we've uh, got a long way to go. There he is, down in 18th position. And again, jean Eric Byrne really under pressure from Lucas de Grassi as they flash under the back straight. You can hear the echo of the motor under the bridge there. Yeah, it's that's a, true. It's, it's a sound we haven't heard before. He's still putting the pressure on, isn't he? Let's see if he's is he brave enough for a move at the hairpin. What do you reckon? No, too far back. Nelson Piquet Jr. leads on lap 15, apt in second, but it's Verne de Grassi and Buemi, the three cars squabbling. And in fact, Daniel Lapp's getting sucked back into this. So really, it's apt. Verne de Grassi and Buemi, the four cars squabbling over second spot. I think Charles Peak contact was truly meant to that damage earlier. PK Jr. is down on 35% uh, at the moment, which is, you know, 5% less than Lucas de Grassi, who's yeah. on 40%. Maybe he figures, he, as he said, they're going to be aggressive today. If fuel saving or energy saving is not as critical as this track, maybe he's thought, okay, I, I can use X amount. And he, yeah, I'd rather have a, he was very close to the wall there on the way out of uh, turn number three, but maybe he thinks when you're in the lead, it's a different story. You've got to try and get that advantage. He's not hanging about, is he? No, <laughs> he certainly is not. We go on board with Daniel Abt, all the action's kicking off behind him, so it looks fairly calm from this camera angle. The grass? The grass, he's probably thinking, oh, God, here comes Buemi. Into the right-hander comes Daniel Lapp then and out through turn seven as he hits 150 kilowatts of power so he's running at his uh, maximum power usage at the moment that they can use during the race as he comes across the line just three tenths of a second behind this from Verne to Degrassi you can see Nelson Piquet vanishing off up in front Abs a bit more circumspect through the chicane than he was first thing this morning yeah absolutely he crashed in free practice one so through he comes and there's a look back to turn one. And look at this. And this is Salvador Duran battling with Loic Duval. Duran almost going into the wall. It's the battle over 12th position. And this is allowing Jaime Algashwari to fight as well. Down into the right-hander. Oh, Salvador Duran's got up there quite well, hasn't he? I was going to say, he started uh, not dead last, but 19th. Tony Oliuzzi's still going in, is up into 15th position. But yeah, Duran's got in front of Duval, Algashwari, uh, Liuzzi and Chandok which is uh, pretty impressive. But now this is the queue once again for second position. 
the grass he still has all that uh, all that extra energy yeah in, in hand there when is he going to use it how is how is he going to use it into the first chicane he's right up behind you can hear the crowd cheering every time they come past because they are enjoying this spectacle nelson pk has just done a personal best in sector one again he this is his father commanded the race in 1980 to win his first grand prix uh, for brabham he finished some 50 seconds up the road i think and it certainly looks as though Nelson Piquet could be repeating that performance today. The cost is just on the fastest first section of anyone there in the Amelie Naguri car, running in sixth place. Good to see them running towards the front in uh, in genuine race conditions. Jerome D'Ambrosio is about to try and make a move, is he? No, not quite, uh, not quite there. Not quite close. The cost is looking like he's gone further back. Yeah, very interesting. There's uh, Adrian Brody and Leonardo DiCaprio having a chat. Hopefully they're enjoying uh, the race or if not at least the bit and oh was that going to be a look to the inside line we just uh, missed it but it looked as though there was a challenge going on in the hairpin a little bit of a lockup from daniel apps in second position these four guys all going absolutely at it oh big moment there that <laughs> was correction Senna. i'd love to see that in slow mo <laughs> that was incredible it's all just we see this don't we it all is linus and it's all brewing and then they change into their cars. The pit stop time, by the way, is 82 seconds that they have to spend from pit in to pit out. D'Ambrosio looking again on Prost. He's closer again. Has he got enough to make it happen on this lap? Has Vern got enough as well? Vern is now closer to Apt than Degrassi is to Vern. And there's a look up the inside. He certainly has. Down into turn five. Through goes Jerome D'Ambrosio past Nico Prost. And what has happened to, to, to Nico Prost here today? Because qualified great he's going into the back of him there leaves his leg breaking far too late and uh, that is a touring car style move back past surely he'll sort of slow down and uh, uh, and re-let yeah, D'Ambrosio through otherwise too late. he's going to get a drive through penalty but it's too late because Senna's already passed uh, D'Ambrosio too yeah that's uh, true yeah I think he's going to feel the wrath of the stewards on that one a real shame for Jerome because he worked really hard Daniel App in Daniel App in the pits from second position that is an early yeah. stop not particularly. I know that he just might think, what's the point of, uh, you know, keeping all the energy in hand? So, I he jumps out into his second car. He hopefully, he'll be in some clear track and he can make things happen. Yeah, potentially, but he was in clear track where he was, I suppose. I mean, yeah, he had pressure from behind, so he's driving more in his mirrors than anything. But he's hoping the other guys are going to get, uh, get come out in traffic. Yeah. Here we go, bit of block in there by the Anland car, yeah, the blue car there. This is Salvador Duran defending from Loic Duval. These two have been having a, a great squabble, and all oh, Duval's got a great run coming through turn six. If we look for the right hand side of shot here, we're going to see them coming through. Duval thought about here it. Here we oh, go. In comes everyone. It's Goodness traffic me, in comes somebody, everyone. Somebody kept going. Yeah, we'll try Bruno and. Bruno Senna. Yeah, so Senna's going. Everyone else is in the pits. This is going to get very, very busy. In comes PK, race leader. In comes Vern, looking for his pit spot, and he's found it then in the end. And this this could all be, if you're at the back of the queue, you're sometimes better off here because you don't have to wait to let other drivers come past you. 82 seconds is, what, 1 minute 22, isn't it? And Daniel App did exactly 1 minute 22. Really good stop from the uh, App boys Daniel Apt could be in contention here for the lead of the race depending on how good the pit stop is for the likes of Nelson Piquet Jr so Senna's out cruising around in this the lead is, of the race yeah, this is our leader he's got, I would imagine he's coming in this lap he's pushing as hard as he possibly can you see it there locking up here's uh, Duval now under pressure from Jaime Algashwari around the left hander and into the pits now comes Bruno Senna but now we're getting to the point in time where the cars are going to be leaving the pit lane and this is the chance to see where they come out so Degrassi waits now Degrassi goes this is on board with Vern and he's coming out ahead of Degrassi so it's PK Jr then Vern and then side by side between Degrassi here comes Daniel Abt he's going to go through and I no. think takes third place. So Jean-Eric Vern has leapfrogged up to second position. It's third now for Daniel Lapp, fourth for Degrassi, fifth for Buemi, it seems to me. We'll try and wait and see because we've got everyone else in the pit. So yeah, PK, Vern, Ap, Degrassi, Buemi and Prost is the order. But we'll have to wait and see. PK was 124, so lost a couple of seconds in the pits, just being hopefully just a little cautious because with his pace, it's his race to lose, and he's still uh, he's still ahead here. Jean-Eric Verne using his fan boost now to try and attack 
Uh, Nelson, uh, well, no, to try and close in, I guess, on Nelson Piquet Jr. or to defend from Daniel Abt. It's the next two cars coming through. Must have just been a, a defense there. As they come around the right-hander. Did Piquet use his fan boot for his first car? I, I don't think he did. He did. Unless he used it mid-lap and we didn't see it. That would have been the tactical move. Yeah, so where is Senna? There's Senna coming out of the pits now. So he's not going to be a, a huge winner in the, all of this. He was a long way down there, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, exactly. So it's pretty much as you were, except Jean-Eric Verne is up into second place past Daniel Abt. Senna's coming out right with Prost. Senna versus Prost coming down into the left hand, into the right hander. Who's going to come out on top? Look to the left hand side, it's Senna. Senna leads from Prost in the battle over uh, sixth position. So that has worked out quite well for Senna. Prost is having a nightmare. Yeah. I mean, Senna qualified, what, 12? Prost ended up starting P2. Yeah. There's Sam Bird, day over. Yeah, a real shame. Uh. I think he's sort of done what he tried to do, go out there and set the fastest lap, and, uh, and, and then just come back into the pits and retire, because there's no way he could make it to the end of the race. Daniel Lapp has not got much usable energy. He's got 86% compared to the other guys. The good news for Senna is he's got 97%, uh, I think it was. So one more Qualcomm safety car, and uh, he could be in contention. So, everyone has made their pit stops now. Nelson Piquet leads, Jean-Eric Verne is second, Apt de Grassi, Buemi, Senna, Frost, Heidfeld, D'Ambrosio, and Sarazan, the top ten. Now we have, now the race gets interesting. It was already pretty interesting, but now, but now it's, right, this is the situation. Off we go. A, a drive-through penalty for Charles Peak. For Surprise. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that unfortunately was deserved. Oh, here we go. It's a bit of Salvador action. Duran. Yeah, Duran and Duval. Oh, is Duran going in the wall here? Oh, goodness me. Oh, oh Yeah. The bit. drifting's next week, gentlemen. Bit of damage there. Yeah, it looks like they might have both got away with it. But <laughs> both of them sliding through the corner. There is actually a drift competition here next week. And, oh, Apt has gone wide there into the final corner. There's our race leader, Nelson Piquet, Lucas. across the line. Look for Degrassi here. Yeah, so not the first or second car, but the battle over third position. And yeah, Degrassi not quite close enough, actually, after all of that. Then Buemi, who, too, doesn't quite have the pace that we thought he would, considering he took the pole position. Yeah, I don't know if the, the Prost guys, or no, the Edams guys, rather, are just not, just, maybe the race setup just not quite as good. Very, very unusual to see that big a difference between uh, qualifying and the race with them. Yeah, absolutely. So down into the right hand and they come out onto the back straight. We've got 14 laps to go. Uh, so about 15 minutes of, of racing remaining here in Long Beach, California. And it's Nelson Piquet, three seconds clear of Jean-Eric Verne. Has he got this in the bag? No, I was going to say something. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not put cursing the boy. I'm not going to do it. He has driven a fantastic race. He's clearly in his own... Uh, He's on postcode today, he's, but as we've seen, it's the slightest mistake when you're in the wall, and I'm sure he's well aware of that. He's got to just keep it, keep it tight. He's just done a fastest sector three there and pulled away even further. Three seconds up the road now. He's absolutely just dancing that car through the chicane. And there's Mr. Liu, the, the boss of the uh, Team China squad. No, it's not, my apologies. <laughs> I didn't recognize the back of his head, uh, but nevertheless, the uh, next EV by Team China squad, and they're going to be very happy, no doubt about that, with how things are progressing up at the front for Nelson Piquet. Uh, what, what a story. We all secretly... Don't you know, say it, Jack. Okay, okay, fine, fine, Don't fine, say fine. it. I'll leave it, I'll leave it for the final lap of my big yeah. closer. Look at the, uh, the app <laughs> boys there, second, uh, third, and fourth. That's, that's quite a performance for them. They've had a busy day there. They're, they're, they're doing well so far. Look how laid back everybody's rear wing is here, obviously. Four pretty long straights by Formula E standards. And now uh, they've all got the, the downforce at an absolute minimum. Here's an in, on car with uh, Jean Eric Gurn, in car, should I say? On car? I suppose it is on car. I suppose it? it is, really. But uh, yeah, he's uh, running P2 right now. And uh, he's clearly learned about uh, saving the energy, doing the fast lap times from his past experiences. Very cautious through the first part of that chicane. Does he think he can win this race? Mm, he, he always think I think he can win it, but the, this, the rate that Nelson's disappearing. Somebody definitely bottomed out there in the chicane, you heard it. It's one of the things with the, 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 the relatively quiet noise the Formula E car makes. You can hear the suspension, you can hear when they bottom out on the curbs and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. So, And as we found out today, you can hear the, when somebody hits a wall. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the biggest battle really is Apt and Degrassi. And look, look how little energy Apt has got remaining. 
if I was in charge of apt, I'm not, thank goodness for the apt team, but I'd be saying you've got to let Lucas through here. He's in such a stronger position in terms of usable energy, in terms of the championship. But meanwhile, let's just look at D'Ambrosio trying to get past uh, Nick Heidfeld down into seven, up the inside. Oh, he's too far back. Oh, he hit him there. He's got away with that. that was yeah, you wouldn't get much between them. I think he actually hit him right in the middle of the corner just to let him know he's there. Yeah, uh, but was, so would you not swap them around if you're on the if you're on the pit wall? Yeah, you, you might do because he's holding him up now. Um, he's marginal, but he is holding him up. But do you want to do that and uh, you know, take Daniel's race away from him? Uh, tough, always a tough call with team orders. Especially when it's your son, I guess. Yeah, good point. <laughs> and Jürgen Apt, the, the boss of the uh, Apt team father of Daniel Apt. So this is all the squabble uh, over eighth position, Heidfeld and D'Ambrosio. D'Ambrosio looks close again. It certainly does. And Degrassi keeps just sort of fading to the inside, but Apt is driving well in that third place. He'd love to get back-to-back -back podiums. On board we go with Buemi in fifth position. The man who's in fifth place in the championship. Down into the final corner on the power a little bit of a correction as he comes out the instant torque of the electric motors catching them out there it's quite good to see them just slide in the rear of the car through uh, out of that hairpin 10 laps to go here in long beach nelson pk jr leads not quite 150 kw there Philly Watts. he's just a little bit shy of that oh, he, he bottomed out there did you hear that yeah he's on yeah he's on about 140 isn't he and uh, we're hearing from the pit lane that sam bird uh, hit the wall at the start so he was did squeezed he? into the wall possibly i suppose on the run down towards the first corner. But well, they were four wide, weren't they? Yeah, exactly. So that'll do it, won't it? Someone's got to go somewhere. There's Antonio Hooks to Costa down in 11th position, just outside the points for Amlin, which is a... Uh, they'll be frustrated, actually. Did he lose time in the pits? Oh, goodness, he lost eight seconds in the pits, Antonio Felix de Costa, which is uh, a real shame because they were running up in fifth place. Yeah, there'll be an investigation in the team about that. That's you know, whatever happened there. Not, not good to... It's so difficult. The teams and the drivers get more of a hang of this. It's more and more difficult to find an advantage. And so if you lose anything, you're going to lose five, ten places. In the turn one goes PK Jr., followed by Jean-Eric Byrne. Third is Daniel Lapp, who's staved off the attack a little bit of Degrassi. He did well to get it in there. He's locking the rear. It's just a little bit on entry. Senna running in sixth, which is a good performance from Mahindra, actually. A pretty solid run. Their best performance, uh, best result of the season so far. Here's a fifth position that they've had twice, once with uh, Chanduk and once with Senna. They need something today, don't they? Yeah. The Mahindra guys, they just had such a tough time. It'd be good to see them get a decent result. Chanduk's running in 14th place. They haven't had a point scoring finish since uh, Senna's fifth in Buenos Aires back in December. Through turn six, it's a three-way battle over third position. It's all going to start to heat up with eight laps to go. Loic Duval has just done the fa fastest first sector of anyone. The plus three and a half seconds back from Algeshwar. I'd love to hear the radio. Mm. Of, uh, to hear Lucas just now, to see if he's in, he's holding me up or not, or if he's just... He's, they are going to oh, close. Daniel Apt has been given a drive-through penalty for overusing his maximum power. And there you can see the reaction of the Apt team. Heads in hands, a shake of the head. And Daniel Apt has been given a drive-through penalty for using too much power. So they have a limit of 150 kilowatts. And at some point during the race, Daniel Apt has used too much. Is that a spike? Is it spiked up to that? Or is it actually a prolonged use of more than 150? I don't know, mate. Tough one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, bit of lock up there by, by Lucas. But now Apt will get the message. And if he doesn't come into the pits, he will at least uh, get out of the way. Also under investigation is car 79, Buemi, uh, D'Ambrosio and the like. Not sure what for. Daniel Abs kept going here. Oh, somebody else is in. And that's Nico Prost. Nico Prost has come into the pits. Nico Prost coming into the pits now. I uh, wonder why he's doing that. So Nico Prost potentially out of the e -Prix. We're hearing that, that Vern's battery's getting a little hot. Okay. Well, they've had overheating issues before. He's got a four-second margin. He's got clean air, yeah. So you'd think he can sort of cruise around. If, if Daniel Abt was a good teammate here, he'd let Lucas pass. And then hold up. Well, I'm not, not necessarily saying hold we'll just up. Front. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Abt is on 38% uh, anyway. 
So he has got a low battery. Senna's got 52 left. Usage. Really? He can he can use that to his advantage here if he can catch these boys in front. So uh, Nico Frost is still it. Frost, I think, is still in the pits. I'm not sure because the clock seems to have stopped, so we'll try and find out. And into the pits comes Daniel Apt to serve his drive through penalty. Almost like oh. Prost drove through. But well, that's, that's what I was just thinking, but because it says he only spent 32 seconds in the pits, unless he's gone, I suppose, maybe if he's pulled back into the paddock, the, the, the time has stopped, but he's certainly not back out on the circuit. So it looks as though Nico Prost is out of the race. And uh, there is Daniel Apt. What a frustration for him. That's another penalty for battery and energy management this year he's had he's had a lot of them yeah you know is that a problem with him is it a problem you know with, with the way the team go about things it's so difficult to say so now the battle of the third is on between Degrassi Buemi and let's not forget Bruno Senna with all that energy in hand to catch these boys if he can make it happen they've obviously had the problems with the cars and getting the cars to to handle but Extra energy, extra speed, here we go. And uh, here we go, Nelson Piquet just going about his business. Five laps to go here in Long Beach, California, just south of Los Angeles. And we have been treated to an entertaining race. There you can see car number nine are under investigation. We're trying to find out why he's under investigation. Big slide there from Lucas Degrassi in third position. And uh, this is gonna be the squabble now to watch, isn't it? Third place, it's not, it's one of the first times that we're not well, I'm going to jinx it again, but oh, I'm, I'm no. going for it. It's one of the first times we haven't got a sort of nose-to-tail lead battle for the final five laps, uh, but maybe that'll come. Who knows? But this is the battle certainly on for third position. Senna's got 42% of uh, usable energy. Oh, Nico Prost was given a drive-through penalty for his collision with D'Ambrosio. So we were never told about that, but I've just been told from the pits uh, by Nicky Shields, thank you very much Nicky, that that's what happened, he was given a drive-through penalty for when he uh, shunted uh, the back of D'Ambrosio, which seems fair. And Buemi just got a warning flag for a pit lane incident. Okay, so, huh. uh, elusive busy. as ever. <laughs> Four laps to go here in Long Beach. Are we going to see a move for third position? There's Alejandro Gag on the left-hand side. He's hanging out with the potential winners as Nelson Piquet Jr. 35 years after his dad won the Long Beach Grand Prix. You've said it. You've said he's it. He's leading uh, the way. Yeah, this is the thing. With, with, look at how easy it looks here. It's not, but when you're that dominant, you can make it look easy. And he's just driving away. And he's, I'm, I'm you, he's nice. feeling good about it right now. <laughs> not quite sure what that was. Team radio coming from uh, somewhere. Okay, need to be more clear because I understand no coast. No coast. Okay, so he's saying you need to be more clear. 7.1. The team radio of Nelson Piquet Jr. we're hearing. And uh, I think they're saying no coast to, to Piquet by the sounds of it. So I just said it sounded effortless and he's on the radio now having a bit of a party <laughs> with the team. <laughs> Oops. Three laps to go here. This is the squabble over third. Wemmy's getting close, isn't he? Wemmy is pushing really hard. Senna has dropped back from this fight now that uh, Daniel Lapt has disappeared from the from the scene. So Wemmy, drop down Wemmy's got to set him up. He's going to. Uh, can he set him up for the pass? It's going to be so difficult because of the, the relatively high speed of the corners here at Long Beach. Can he set him up for that pass in the last couple of laps? If only, well, this is, we're almost onto the penultimate lap. Race leader Nelson Piquet will be in a couple of moments' time. A little faint from Buemi, but he knows that consistency is important as well. Here's, oh, goodness me, this is action. D'Ambrosio going past Heidfeld. Oh, what was Nick thinking there? I don't know. I hate to say Nick got deserved what he got there. He was squeezing the guy into the wall. The guy's there, you can't expect him to disappear. He's bonkers. Yeah, just said he's lost his rear wing there, so he gets going again and he might be able to limp around to the finish, but he's not going to be picking up any points from that one as the battle of the third goes on to the penultimate lap. And it grass he's got a good margin here. <sighs> yeah. But when he's going to be trying to build, the, we've seen him do it before, just build up on that last lap and see if he can get closer and closer and make that one move. He's going to have one shot at it, and that's it. But PK is three seconds up the road, and just take it easy, a sharp peak. And he's a, 
he, he's pretty close to going to lap down, old show. Yeah, well, he's, he's been in that one car for uh, quite a while. He lost his front wing in that collision with Yano Trulli, so he pitted early on. This is Charles Peak, the back marker. Uh, but out there is Nelson Piquet Jr. And there is the Team China squad. Next DB, but on the last lap now is Nelson Piquet Jr. Here he is coming down towards Turn 1. Just 2.1 kilometers to go. Really slowed it down there. He's down to a 61.5 second lap, just taking it nice and easy. And uh, he's got a gap bringing it home. Boemi still close to Degrassi there. Still not quite close enough to make it happen. It's going to be very, close very enough tight. to make it exciting. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So Nelson Piquet Jr. turns into the right-hander. Now out along Seaside Way. It's been 40 years since racing began here in Long Beach. Since then, we've had IndyCar, Formula One, Formula 5000, also the American Touring Car Championship. But 35 years ago, Nelson Piquet Sr. won his first ever Formula One race in Long Beach. And now, Nelson Piquet Jr. exits the final corner to win his first Formula E race you got it, in Long you got it, Beach. Good job, Nelson. Performance from Nelson PK Jr. Delight for next EV by Team wow, China. Congratulations, guys. Jesus Christ. Can't believe we did it. <laughs> I knew. I felt this weekend was ours. I knew it. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Uh, such a good weekend. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for trusting me. I'm sure this is only the first one. It was my father's first one, and it's my first one. Now we're going to have several others. That's Maybe cool. three championships along the way. <laughs> The old man was pretty successful, wasn't he? Uh, great to see. Well, a well-deserved victory, just domination all day. Yeah, he was in the zone from the moment he came. He would have had pole position had it not been for Sarazan backmarking. That start was ludicrous to go from third to first and a hugely well-deserved victory for Nelson Piquet Jr. Nelson climbs out of the car. And he's the winner of round six of the season. <laughs> Let's hear then from our race winner for round six, Nelson PK Jr. for Next EV by Team China. Well, Nelson PK, you knew you could do it this weekend, and you have. How good does that feel? Uh, it's, it's hard to believe. I mean, everything worked out. I mean, my first fan boost, our first win. I felt so comfortable over here. Okay. I knew. Uh, I could have won Miami, but uh, we did it over here, you know, and uh, this helmet means means a lot, you know, it's 35 years since my father won the first Formula One race in his career, and uh, it's my first Formula E race in my career, so uh, this helmet's going to, I don't think I'm going to give it to him now, I think I'm going to keep it and do an extra few more races now. <laughs> At what point during the race did you think, I've got this, I can win it? <laughs> well, honestly... <laughs> At, at like about four laps, let's say six laps ago, the team went, okay, more coasting, more coasting. And I understood no coasting. So I started, I started oh, let's keep pushing. And then they came back on the radio and said, Nelson, maximum coasting. So holy I didn't understand that you guys wanted me to coast. So I got a little bit worried, but I think, you know, I had under, everything under control and the uh, car was great. I mean, I, I mean, just everything worked out. The start was amazing. You know, I think uh, the procedures hours and the starts, we just found something that, uh, made us an amazing start and won us the race. Jean-Eric Verne is in second position then, and he is with Nicky, his first ever podium in Formula E, astonishingly. Jean-Eric Verne, best, best result so far this season. You must be happy. Yeah, um, I don't know what if I'm most happy about the second place or finishing the race. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm happy, uh, you know, for the guys. With the crash this morning, it was a good way to uh, apologize, and uh, it's a good point for the team also for the, for the championship. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm happy to be on the podium, starting fifth. It's, uh, it's quite good, you know, the other guy was uh, Piquet was just uh, a little bit too quick for me to catch him. And uh, we've done a good job this weekend, and uh, I mean today. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to bring this back home and, uh, and uh, roll on for the win in Monaco. And uh, Monaco, yeah, clearly the objective will be to win. And uh, I'm happy. So now let's hear from third place man, Lucas Degrassi. 
Lucas Degrassi, good to see you back on the podium and at the top of the championship standings. Yeah, great to be back on top. Um, it was a very tough race. We had very, very bad luck the last two races. We had a, a suspension failure in Buenos Aires leading the race. And in Miami, we had a battery overheating also uh, in third position. So we lost a lot of points in the last races, but now fourth podium in six races. Can't complain. Uh, the team has a fantastic job bringing, uh, bringing us back into the lead of the championship. And now we go for the European rounds um, completely renovated. Did you enjoy the battles out there on the track? It looked pretty fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We were battling with uh, Jean-Eric in the beginning, then with Sebastian, then with Prost. It was, um, it was pretty tough, but everybody was fair. And here's a look at the race results. Nelson Piquet Jr. winning 1.7 seconds clear of Jean-Eric Verne, but in truth, it was a lot more comfortable than that. Lucas de Grassi completing the podium. Sebastian Buemi finishes in fourth place, ahead of Senna in fifth. D'Ambrosio da Costa, Algashwari Duval and Sarazan completing the top 10. Nick Heidfeld finishing just outside the top 10 in 11th place, ahead of Chandok, Liuzzi Pross and Apt and Peak completing our 16 runners with Duran Bird, Trillian Speed retiring from the race. And now the trophies are set to be awarded. Robert Garcia, the mayor of Long Beach, handing out the trophy to the race winner, Nelson Piquet. And what has that done to the championship standings? Well, Lucas de Grassi is now one point clear of Nelson Piquet Jr. at the top of the standings. Two Brazilians vying it out. And then Nico Prost is still in third place, six points off the top. Sebastian Buemi in fourth. Sam Bird has dropped from third down to fifth. But we've now had the top six drivers in the standings all win one race so far this season. As far as the teams are concerned, Edams are now up to 124 points at the top of the championship. So uh, 27 points clear of Audi Sport at with Virgin racing in third place. Only just in front of Andretti with Team China in fifth. The three gentlemen will stand on the top step of the podium together, joined by Mr. Liu. <laughs> and he is over the moon with that. Great to see Team China having success because they've raced in GTs in the past, in A1 GP as well. But now they are winning at the top level of international motorsports. No goggles for Nelson Piquet Jr. He wants to take all the champagne he can on a victorious afternoon for the Brazilian. All of the top six have won a race. No one yet has won two races. Maybe that'll change when we get to the next e -Prix, which will be Monaco on the 9th of May. Make sure you join us for that. Saturday the 9th of May around the streets of Monaco. It's going to be superb. From myself, Jack Nichols, Dario Franchitti alongside me, Nicky Shields in the pits, and everyone at Formula E, thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you on the streets of Monaco in May. When the lightning strikes, Let's stand together when the